Okay, this is chapter 3, the teaching of Jesus from the book, The Difference Between Baptism, Receiving, and Filling of the Holy Spirit, written by David F. Middleton. From the Old Testament era to the New Testament era. <laughs> Double the liar. From the Old Testament era to the New Testament era, there was a 400-year period where no prophetic voice was heard, bringing a word from God. Then John the Baptist was born. He was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb, and the anointing of a prophet was upon him. In the third chapter of Matthew, it records him prophesying of the kingdom of heaven at hand and of the coming of the Lord. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 3 reads, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. All of the people in Jerusalem, Judea, and the region around Jordan went out to hear him. He was a prophetic voice. Of the coming of Jesus, the Messiah, and the Holy and of the Holy Spirit. This was declared in Matthew chapter three, verse eleven. Matthew chapter three, verse eleven says, "I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire." John the Baptist declared that he baptized them unto repentance, but that one would come after him who would baptize them. With the Holy Spirit. Jesus was the one John spoke of who would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. We know that this was something different from being filled with the Holy Spirit because John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb to carry out his prophetic ministry. John makes another important statement in verse 13 and 14. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbid, forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb, but here he says that he needs to be baptized by Jesus. What was Jesus to, bap to, be, what was Jesus to baptize with? Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, John needed to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, even though he was already filled with the Holy Spirit. Thus, it is clear that there is a difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit and being baptized with the Holy Spirit. During Jesus' earthly ministry, he taught about the Holy Spirit. His first statements about the Holy Spirit are recorded in the seventh chapter of John. John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, and 39 read, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Here is the first instance where there is mention of receiving the Holy Spirit. Notice that Jesus said that they that believe on him should receive the Holy Spirit. This reveals that receiving the Holy Spirit is for believers. However, they could not receive the Holy Spirit yet because the Holy Spirit was not yet given. The Holy Spirit would not be sent forth to be received until after Jesus was glorified. When, when was Jesus glorified? He was glorified when he was seated at the right hand of God in heaven. This was declared by Peter on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. When Jesus was glorified in heaven, he received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit and sent the Holy Spirit into 
the earth to be received by believers. Before Jesus was glorified, the Holy Spirit could fill men and women, but they were not baptized with the Holy Spirit, nor did they receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught further about the Holy Spirit in the 14th chapter of John. John chapter 14 verse 16 reads, And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Here Jesus said that he would pray to the Father to send them another comforter. The another comforter is identified as the Holy Spirit in verse 26. In verse 16, the Bible says that the Father shall give you the Holy Spirit. And in verse 26, the word says that the Father will send the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thus, the Father is the one who sends the Holy Spirit. Jesus also said that the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. He further reveals that the Holy Spirit was with with them and shall be in them. Thus, the Holy Spirit was not yet in them at that time. Also, those of the world, which would include all unbelievers, cannot receive the Holy Spirit. This is consistent with Jesus' teaching in John chapter 7, where he indicated that believers are to receive the Holy Spirit. Thus, it is clear that only born-again believers can receive the Holy Spirit. Now look at John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. This verse reveals that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and that Jesus will send the Holy Spirit to us from the Father. Jesus did not have the Holy Spirit within himself to send him to us. He had to get the Holy Spirit from the Father. To get the Holy Spirit from the Father, Jesus had to go to heaven. This is revealed in John chapter 16, verse 7. It reads, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The word expedient means advantageous. Uh, or profit, profitable. Jesus said that it was advantageous or profitable that he went away. Why? Because if he did not go away, he would not be able to get the Holy Spirit from the Father and send the Comforter to them. Some have, ta some, have, some have thought that the disciples were born again and received the Holy Spirit before the day of Pentecost because of John 20, chapter 20, verse 22. Let's examine this occurrence. And see what happened. John chapter 20 verse 22 says. And when he sa had said this. He breathed on them and said unto them. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. First we must remember that. It was not possible that. The disciples could be born again. And receive the Holy Spirit before. The day of Pentecost. Because he already saw. That Jesus said in John chapter 7 verse 39. That the Holy Spirit was not given. Until after he was glorified. Further, furthermore, we also saw in Acts chapter 2, verse 33, that Jesus did not get the Holy Spirit from the Father to send to the disciples until after he was exalted at the right hand of God. That occurred after his final ascension to heaven when he was enthroned at the right hand of the Father as King of kings and Lord of lords. Thus, the disciples could not have been born again and could not have received the Holy Spirit in John chapter 20, verse 22. So what happened when Jesus breathed on them and spoke to them to receive the Holy Spirit? When we look at the Greek tense of the verb receive, it is in the aorist tense. The aorist tense indicates that there was some sort of a receiving of the Holy Spirit that took place immediately. The question is, where did they receive the Holy Spirit and what did the Holy Spirit do for them? The answer is that they received the Holy Spirit in their mind so that they could understand the scriptures. 
to see this fact, let's look at parallel passages of Scripture in John 20, verse 19 through 22, and Luke chapter 24, verse, verses 36, 39, 40, 44, and 45. First John chapter 20, verse 19 reads, then, they, then the same day at evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fears of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Verse 20. And when he had said, and when he had so said, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. Then said Jesus to, to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 24, verse 36 reads, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Verse 39 says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it, is, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. 40. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Verse 45, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. By examining both passages of scripture, you can see that they record the same occurrence. Jesus stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you in John chapter 20, verse 19 and Luke 24, verse 36. He showed them his hands and side in John chapter 20, verse 20, and his hands and feet in Luke chapter 39. I'm sorry, in feet in Luke chapter 24, verse 39 and 40. In John chapter 22, verse or John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus breathes on them, saying for them to receive the Holy Spirit. And in Luke chapter 24, verse 44 and 45, Jesus opened their understanding to understand the scriptures he had spoken unto them from the law, prophets, and psalms. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal the spiritual things of God to man. We can perceive them with the natural mind. Thus, they received the Holy Spirit to open up their minds to understand the scriptures and not to receive the Holy Spirit to dwell in their spirit. Again, thus they received the Holy Spirit to open their minds to understand the scriptures and not to receive the Holy Spirit to dwell in their spirit. The fact that the disciples were not born again and did not receive the Holy Spirit to dwell in them at this time is seen even clearer when you read Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until... Ye be endued with power from on high. Verse 50. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Verse 51. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Jesus said he would send the promise of his Father, which was the Holy Spirit. If the disciples had already received the Holy Spirit to dwell in them, Jesus would never have said this just before being carried up into heaven. The fact that the disciples had not received the Holy Spirit to dwell in them is also seen further in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The disciples were told to wait for the promise of the Father, which was the Holy Spirit. Jesus indicated that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. Thus, they obviously 
were not born again, had not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, and had not received the Holy Spirit to dwell in them yet. At the conclusion of Jesus' earthly ministry, he returned to heaven to be enthroned in his kingdom as King of kings and Lord of lords at the right hand of the Father. He had taught the disciples concerning the Holy Spirit. We have seen the truths which he taught them. In summary, we have seen that John the Baptist taught that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. Jesus also spoke of the disciples being baptized with the Holy Spirit just before he final, his final ascension to heaven. He told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which was the Holy Spirit. He indicated that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days after his ascension. He taught that believers are to receive the Holy Spirit. He further indicated that the Holy Spirit could not be received until the Holy Spirit was given, which would not occur until after he was glorified. He also taught the disciples that the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. This revealed that the Holy Spirit is only for believers. He further said that the Holy Spirit was with them and would be in them. Jesus taught them where the Holy Spirit came from. He said that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. Jesus said that he would receive the Holy Spirit from the Father and then send the Holy Spirit to them. He also revealed that he had to depart and go away, referring to his final ascension to heaven, so that he could send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to them. After his resurrection, he breathed the Holy Spirit upon them, which they received in their minds, in order that they might understand the Scriptures. As he departed from them, they understood that the Holy Spirit the promise of the Father would be coming to them in a few days by means of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now the stage was set for the Holy Spirit to come into the earth. As we look at the Holy Spirit in the New Testament era, primarily revealed in the book of Acts, we, most, we must study three important words concerning the Holy Spirit. Understanding these three words are the key to seeing the work of the Holy Spirit in man. These three words are baptism, receiving, and filling. Before we directly study the, uh, the baptism, receiving, and filling of the Holy Spirit, we must understand the meaning and purpose of baptism. Thank you for watching.